My name is AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida, and I'm coming today to bring you a video on an interesting little chess game. This is a chess game that was played on the, um, it was featured as the problem of the day on the chess games website. That's www.chessgames.com. Every day when you first uh, click on the main screen there, they usually have a, right in the center of the screen, they have a problem that's featured as the problem of the day. And usually it features interesting tactics. You know, Monday is a very easy problem, but the problems get progressively harder until by Sunday, it's very hard to uh, solve the problems. And the problems on, on the later on in the week can be very challenging. But anyway, uh, this was featured just the other day as the problem of the day. And uh, I got interested in this chess game because of that. And um, I decided what, what I'd do is I would go ahead and annotate this game and uh, bring that to you. And uh, also, too, um, basically, I'm going to show you basically a fairly new opening system as well. So if you're, an int if you're a player that likes to play new things and you're, you're not afraid of challenges, then there's a possibility of playing a relatively new opening system. Um, and we'll talk about that position when we get there. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the game. The game starts off knight f3. This is, you know, a ready. And now black plays d5. Of course, that's one of the most common responses. Now, that's not the only response. Black could play pawn to king knight 3 or knight f6. You can use symmetry or copycat technique, if you will, for a while. There's many different things that, you know, black could do here. He could play c5. He could play d6, e5. I mean, there's just almost an unlimited number of, of ways that, uh, you know, the, the game can be. Again, yeah, one time I saw black played knight c6 and white played e5. White played e4 and black played e5, and we just transposed into a, a Ray Lopez. So just about any transposition there is possible. But anyway, black plays d5. White plays d4. Knight f6, of course, now we've transposed into a double queen pawn opening. c4, now if black takes or captures on c4, it's a queen's gambit accepted. And if he plays c6 or e6, then it's going to be a queen's, uh, you know, a queen's gambit declined, either the regular queen's gambit or a slob. Black plays e6, knight c3, and now white, black rather, he plays a rather interesting little move. He plays d takes c4. Uh, I have a chess book. It's a very old book. It was printed back in the 1960s, and, it, and it's in descriptive notation. It actually gives that move a question mark, and it says it's always wrong to think that the annotator in that book said it's always wrong to give up the center. Of course, that's, you know, incorrect. Today we know that that's a... Um, not a correct stance. I mean, you know, that's just a transposition to another opening. And uh, really, according to the theory, the, you know, the main line there, what's supposed to be the most solid option for for uh, black is to hold the center. And that's the main line, of course, just briefly, is c6, bishop g5, knight bd7, e3, bishop e7, rook c1. And, of course, these are the main, main lines of the queen's gambit decline. And, uh, you know, if you want to investigate this position further, then I would refer you to any opening reference. And uh, let's say you don't have an opening reference. If all you have access is to a computer, since you're watching this video, then I would refer you to um, uh, find, uh, Google a game between Capablanca and Alakine. It's on one of my Angel Fire websites, and it's a very deeply annotated game. And there I provide a, a fairly lengthy, but also a fairly complete opening survey of all the uh, uh, major lines in the Queen's Gambit decline. So you should be able to find that on on the internet. Like I said, it's on my main Angel Fire number one website. And if you just Google Capablanca, Alakine, Chess, and my last name, I'm sure that it's going to come up. But anyway, going back to the actual game, here Black plays D takes C4. He does surrender the, the center. And, um, you know, this. if you want to see more about these lines, you can go to MCO 15, especially on page 462 there's a diagram that refers you to this position and uh, this really can be a transposition this is another reason that i got interested in this game and wanted to do a video on this game um it was because it's just it's just such an interesting game there are so many ways to uh, to play this line and so many ways for uh black to do things you can transpose to just about uh, any opening and also there's a chance to play a, a relatively almost a brand new opening system and we'll talk about that when we get to the critical position. But anyway, black plays d takes c4. Now, black, white, you know, has a bunch of different options here. In the game, white plays queen a4 check. Okay, and that's, uh, you know, I'm sure a book for a novice might say that's wrong to bring the queen out early, yada, yada, yada. Of course, that's silly. But, and that's, queen a4 check seems to be the main choice of most grandmasters in this position today. 
and the games the last few years. And I, I guess the attraction of that move is basically that white is guaranteed to get the pawn back. Well, let's just look at some of the options because this is a very transpositional position. I mean, it can literally, um, you know, change into just about any different opening. Let's just look at a few of the options. E4 here, this is similar to the Geller Gambit. If this pawn were back here, and I think the pawn were up here, this will be what no, what is known in the Slav as a Geller Gambit. But anyway, E4, and then I recommend for black, one of his most active lines here is play Bishop E4. Then white should play Bishop G5 and C5. And now we've transposed into a subsystem of the Ragozin system. This is known as the Vienna Variation, very sharp line. Um, I don't have any books on hand, or at least I couldn't find any on the Rogozin system. But however, if you wanted to just buy a, a DVD or a, a book on the Rogozin system, I'm sure that they would cover this. And if you have MCO, that's MCO 15, page 426, beginning with column 73. Now, going back here to our initial position, let's look at the alternatives. You can also play E3 here. Now, E3 would probably be a transposition to a Queen's Gambit accepted. And uh, uh, again, looking at the power book and, and the Ribka book and what is the latest uh, choices here by, and also looking at the statistics for my main database, what masters are playing currently after A6. And I have a DVD on, on this. It's only about, uh, on the Queen's Gambit accepted, it's only about three or four years old. There the author in e ECO here recommends A4 as being Black's most vigorous choice. And uh, now basically the main line is C5, Bishop takes C4, Knight C6, White castles, bishop e7, queen e2, c takes d4, rook d1, black castles, e takes d4. And basically, this is a typical isolated queen pawn position. And uh, if you want to, again, if you need to see more, any book on the queen's gambit accepted would be good. I have both a DVD and, and several books on the queen's gambit accepted. My favorite book on this opening is a, it's not a great big thick book, but it's fairly thorough and it's very concise. And it, the author of that book is by Grandmaster Gufeld. And uh, it's a little book on the Queen's Gambit. It's, I believe it's called the Queen's Gambit for the Tournament Player. And a very uh, thorough con uh, coverage of all the lines. And you can also see MCO 15, page 453, beginning with column number 7 there. And that's the other choice there. And uh, just going back here. And now there's another th third line that you can play that would be, you know, talk about transpositions. Or they just seem to be endless here. Is that after D takes C4, then black white could also rather play Bishop to G5. And now c6, e4, b5, e6, h6, bishop h4, g5, knight takes, h takes, bishop takes, g5, knight bd7. We reach the, uh, and most opening books give white here a solid advantage. However, uh, black has good counterplay. And you, there are a couple of books here that I have that cover this opening. Probably the best one, I have a DVD too that covers this opening, but probably the best book on this opening would be the, I'm kind of old fashioned. I prefer books to uh, to a DVDs. Not that that the books are clearly better. Some of the DVDs are quite good. It's just I'm old fashioned. I have a lot of chess books, and I just prefer to sit down and open a chessboard, set up a chessboard rather, and open a chess book and just plow through the variations that way, and you know try to analyze. And a lot, of course, a lot of times I use the tools. A lot of times I'll have the position on my computer and be analyzing the position with an engine and seeing what the engine says. But I just still prefer chess books. But a very good book on this this opening here is The Botvinnik Semi-Slav by Stefan Peterson. And there's also The Slav for the Tournament Player. Those are two excellent books on this opening. And I would refer you to all, one of those. And also this is covered in MCO. This position would be covered in MCO. See MCO 15, page 478, beginning with column number 44. But anyway, going back to the game here, in the actual game, you know, white played, black played rather, he played D takes C4. And now we get queen a4 check. And, uh, you know, again, uh, the chief advantage of this move is that white does not have to worry about black managing to permanently retain the button on c4. White's guaranteed to get the pawn back. So I would say that's the uh, main reason that a, a lot of white players play this opening line. And now c6, and the next few moves are fairly easy to understand. Uh, putting a knight here is just walking into a pin. And also in most queen pawn openings, if black places a knight on c6, I'm talking about. Uh, and also the most queen pawn openings, uh, good players will tell you, it's generally a mistake, mistake to block your C pawn. You need your C pawn as a, you know, C5 as a later lever on the opening. So anyway, queen A4 checks C6, queen takes C4, B5, taking advantage of the, hitting the queen with tempo, queen D3, knight BD7, E4, and now B4. And here's a very interesting position. Uh, of all the games I found in the database, I only found one where it went knight D1. 
I found none where he white white went knight e2 or knight b1. Obviously, knight b1 is a tremendous loss of tempo, and you have to redeploy the knight. The same thing goes for knight e2. So here, all the grandmasters are playing, and all the good players are playing knight a4. That seems to be the, the best line. And now queen a5. And now we see the logic of black playing this line. He gets a little bit of play against this knight here on a4. And white, of course, has to play b3, c5. And now we reach our critical position. And here's the very interesting thing that if you uh, search this uh, for this position in the uh, main database or an online database, I only got 26 matches. So this is really a relatively new position. And the earliest match, I think, was either 1993 or 1995. So this is not an old position at all. In fact, I can find no examples of this uh, opening prior to the 1990s. So if you're interested in playing, uh, you know, there's only 26 games and the main lines haven't been that deeply explored. And if you can handle the other transpositions that I pointed out earlier, then here's your chance to play a fairly relatively new opening system here. And uh, uh, I would say that Black's opening play thus far has been an absolute model for the aspiring student. It features very vigorous opening play. And basically, Black is fighting white for every square of the chessboard and every inch of the chessboard. And like I said, I searched the uh, the online database here and only found less than 30 matches. And I think White's next move is probably the most vigorous is E5 here. That's according to the engine seemed like that. And also the the uh, the power book and uh, the, the computer books, that, that seems to be the favorite move there. And uh, after knight D5, bishop to B2. And White would get a very small, a slight edge. But Black certainly has a, a very playable position here. White play, rather going back here, what going back to this position, White played bishop to e3, and this seemed to be a rather routine developing move, in my opinion. Uh, however, if White had followed it up correctly, he, he might have gotten a, a slight edge out of the opening. He did not do that. Um, but anyway, bishop e3 was what was played. Now here I think Black should play, probably the correct move for Black is to play c takes d4. And I believe I've analyzed that here. Oh, let's go back up to, I wanted to back up here for just a second. Go, let's back up to e5, knight d5, bishop to b2 here. This is, of course, like I said, this position gives a very slight, small edge for white, and all the engines confirm that. But let's just look at a game where white didn't play bishop to b2, and the game we're going to look at, white played bishop e2. And we're not going to try to analyze this, just run through it quickly. c takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop a6. This is a good move for black because uh, most of the time in the queen's gambit decline, your queen bishop is your problem child, so to speak. In other words, your light squared bishop is, is your worst piece on the chessboard. A lot of times, if you can get that out and get it to an active square or exchange it off, then you are doing well indeed. And that's what happens here. Bishop to d2, bishop to e7, a3, bishop takes e2, king takes e2, queen b5 check, queen c4, queen b8. Apparently, black did not want to exchange queens. Queen c6, b takes a3, rhc1, a5, king f1, queen a7. That's to guard the knight on d7 because black wishes a castle. Knight to d4 castles. Black goes, uh, white rather goes knight b5, and now queen a6. That was a nice little move because obviously you can't take here because now rook d8, rf d8 will trap the, uh, the white queen. So pretty much looks like white's almost forced to uh, exchange here. Queen takes, rook takes. Black's doing very well indeed here. f4, bishop to b4, rook c2, rook b8. Black has all of his pieces well in play. Knight takes a3. Bishop takes d2, rook takes d2, rook takes b3, g3, rook c6 here. And here white plays knight c2. And if you want to, you can just pause, rather pause your uh, uh, video right now. Just go ahead and reach up and hit the pause button. Did you find the correct play for, for um, black, the correct move? Black plays rook takes c2. And here white resigns, and the, the reason he resigns, if rook takes c2, knight e3 check, regaining the material with advantage, black will be a piece and a pawn up. Of course, there was no um, reason for white to continue in that position. And that was a game between Petrag Nikolic, GM, uh, GM Petrag Nikolic, he's 2659 at the time that this game was played, GM Vladimir Kramnik, of course Kramnik being a former world champion, uh, he was rated 2758 when this game was played. And this is the ninth Melody Amber tournament, the rapid play part of the tournament, round five, Monte Carlo 2000. And uh, if uh, my point of showing you that game was that if Kramnik could play the black side of this system, 
this has to be a playable system. When I very first looked at it, I was I was ready to dismiss Black's play as just too dicey or too chancy. But obviously, if you've got big time GMs playing the black side of the system, then it's it's playable. And like I said, it's it's very interesting. I think it certainly would be a surprise uh, weapon. Say at the sixteen hundred level, it's very unlikely that you know that your opponent, if you get to reach these positions, would have studied this at all. I mean, there's only you know there's not a lot of books that cover this line. And there's, you know, only 26 games in the in the Grandmaster uh, database. In fact, some of the offshoot, the branches that I go off to, I analyze them. I don't show them here. But uh, you can just play three or four moves, and there are no games in the database. So really talk about undiscovered territory and, you know, things that are just, you know, totally uh, unanalyzed. Uh, that would be your opportunity to play, you know, a fairly new opening system. So that was why I wanted to show you that. But now we're going to get back to the actual game here. White plays bishop e3, black responds with bishop e7, and uh, that move, in my opinion, might have been a little too complacent. Probably more active, according to the engines, was bishop b7, or even c takes d4. c takes d4 is a good approach because I generally teach my students that when you have a, your opponent has a big center, it's good to exchange one of your pawns, you know, advance one of your wing pawns, like your f pawn or your c pawn, and when white has pawns on e4 and d4, try to exchange you know, off one of these pawns because that will lessen white's control of the center. And I usually also, too, try to help, you know, you get, if you're playing the uh, the black side of that position, help you to get counterplay. Uh, after bishop to b7, that seems to be the net, the best line for black. Knight takes c5, bishop takes c5, d takes c5, bishop takes e4. And uh, I would have to say black is, is no worse here. He's no worse than, 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 uh, um, white, uh, in fact, he has chances maybe to win this pawn and come out a pawn up. So, uh, you know, the, and, I, and I certainly think that in a regular game that, you know, between two non-masters, black will do just fine there. And you can analyze that with an engine. That would be a good, like a homework assignment. If you were really serious about th seriously thinking about playing this system, you could analyze that and be prepared for just about any white, uh, you know, white reply there. But anyway, in the actual game, white played, black rather played bishop to e7. White plays D takes C5. Uh, that looks strong, but, you know, at least on the surface. But I have to, I distrust any plan that requires that white knight to remain on A4 long term. Uh, a really good line for white, of course, I found this with the engines. Uh, Ripka 3 and, and Houdini. Knight takes C5. Knight takes C5. D takes C5. B takes C5. Queen B5 check. Queen takes B5. Bishop takes B5. Bishop to D7. Bishop takes C5. Bishop takes b5, knight d4, bishop d7, f3, a5, knight e2, bishop c6, rook c1. And white is clearly here, uh, better here, okay? Small but reliable advantage. And um, uh, it's not clear if white can force a win here, but that certainly would have been better than what happened in the game. In the game, you know, white winds up getting a much worse position. So this, this was, you know, just, you know, d takes c5 might have been a little bit less than best. And the line I just showed you was an engine line. It was checked with two strong engines, and I checked all my analysis in this game with Fritz 12, so I'm quite sure you know of, of, about some of these ideas. D takes C5, though, was probably playable. Maybe not the strongest move, but certainly was a playable move. Black plays Bishop B7, Queen B5. Black doesn't want to exchange there. Queen C7. Now I think White's best move is uh, got to be Rook C1. That's an engine move. And, or Bishop to D3. And... Um, one of the problems White has here is he seems to be drifting in this game. He never seems to quite lock in or have a clear plan. And today, in this day of, you know, computer-assisted, computer-prepared uh, openings, you have to try to find the most accurate move at every single point. And uh, White's basically failing to do that. So, to me, that just indicates that, you know, either White's not, you know, prepared, he's not really 100% on here, or he's, you know, not really finding the, the correct thread here. He's losing the thread of the game. Anyway, white played queen takes b4, bishop takes e4, bishop e2, black castles, white castles, bishop c6. And now the position is roughly equal. I don't think white has any advantage. Uh, well, he actually, he might have a little bit of an edge. Uh, he's up a pawn. But there's very, it seems like there's very good chances black can just put a rook here and bishop takes and then win this pawn. And, you know, he can very quickly get out of the pin on the file by just playing after bishop takes knight playing and bishop takes pawn playing queen b6. So it looks like black has good chances to regain the pawn, what I would say. And the, the engines show this position as being very close to, to equal here. But here white plays a very bad move. He just plays a thoughtless move. 
bishop f4, now he loses a tempo to just e5. And now white should probably retreat the bishop back to e3 or d2. To me, e3 is the most natural square. I realize that black might play knight g4 and harass your bishop, but if he did that, you could always retreat the bishop to d2, play h3, and then put your bishop back on e3. So, I mean, there's ways to deal with that. Um, here, white plays the bishop back on g3. This is very thoughtless and, and clearly inferior. And now the bishop basically winds up just being out of play. And now, whoop, and now black plays knight e4. And now black has ideas of knight takes bishop also too, and doubling white's, you know, damaging white's pawn structure. Another further reason why this bishop should have never gone to g3 in the first place. Now Fritz and Houdini show the position to be about black, to be about level. And in all the analysis that I did, black is destined to win back the button on c5. White plays rac1, rook b8, queen c4, rf c8, rf d1, knight takes g3, h takes g3. And here the simplest move... The best move for black by far it has to be just bishop takes knight on a4, followed by knight takes pawn on c5. And both Fritz and Houdini clearly indicate that's the way for black to go. Black plays queen a5, and, and now white plays a nice move, queen g4. And he's got veiled threats against the, the black king, ideas of you know sacrifice of maybe knight h4 and f5 with ideas of checkmate. And also, too, he has a very simple threat of just rook takes knight on d7 and getting two pieces for a rook. And that would give white a winning advantage at the master level. Here, the best move for black is a very simple, just rook c7. Um, for some reason, black plays knight f6. You know, he's he's just getting his pieces off their best squares. Queen f5 and now e4. That was completely wrong. And we'll see why in a minute. But anyway, the correct move for black, according to all the engines, is bishop takes a4. White plays queen takes e5. Kind of a little, nice little in-between move there. Rook e8. B takes a4. Bishop takes c5. Queen takes c5, queen takes c5, rook, ta rook takes e2, rook b5, rook c8. And black has no major problems here. The computers tend to value white as slightly better, but I think that's an overestimation in my opinion, simply because these double rook pawns are they're doubled and this one's weak. You know, white definitely might wind up losing one of them, but that's just the double pawns make the idea that the extra pawn is going to be not, not that good here. So I just really think that here black really has no real problems here. And you can check that out with any engine. In the actual game, white played e4. And that turned out to be very bad because after knight d4, bishop takes a4. Now here, I'm going to, if you want to, I'll give you a chance. Just tell you, go ahead here and pause the video. Okay, did you pause the video and did you try to analyze the position for just a few minutes? I hope that you did that. Because, uh, you know, it, there, white has a very interesting move here. And I hope you analyzed and tried to figure out exactly the move that white should play here now in the actual game white blew it in the actual game white played b takes a4 however he missed an in-between move or just a tremendous shot here and it was very logical after bishop takes a4 white had this very interesting move c6 notice this is a bishop it really doesn't take a lot of calculation in my opinion because first of all this bishop can't it's trapped it has no squares and if bishop takes pawn knight takes bishop that not only does he win back the bishop he forks the queen on a5 and the rook on b8 and so you know it's it's just a and also too black's queen is hanging you know there's the fact that the the queen on, on a5 is hanging so black really doesn't have a lot of good moves here according to the engines the next following line is all forced queen takes f5 knight takes f5 now black can't save his bishop say bishop takes pawn because of knight takes bishop check and knight takes c8 and that'll allow white to come out and exchange ahead the next move is 100% forced is absolutely best and forced all the engine to indicate black has to play bishop a3 there. Okay, and then c7, bishop d7, rook takes d7, knight takes d7, c takes b8, queen takes, rook c7, knight e5, rook takes a7. And this is all engine analysis. And here with the two connected pass pawns in the ending, you know, white has almost a, you know, forced win from here. I mean, white's the only person, in my opinion, has any winning chances in this position has got to be white. It may not be an easy win. I mean, you know, with best play and if you use the engine, you know, maybe black can make white's, you know, life difficult. But certainly, in my opinion, you know, uh, white is the only player who here who has any winning chances at all. So, you know, white really missed a, a big opportunity there. That's why I gave BA takes A4 a dubious. I would think that a grandmaster like a Copian would have found a, a move like that, but he didn't find that. Anyway, rook takes C5. And now we're back to equality. Black might even be slightly equal here. So, you know, white really, you know, both sides did not find the best line, and the analysis clearly shows that. 
Okay, and now queen f4, and now black plays a very nice move. He plays rook d8. If black saw these tactics all the way through, then you know I he's got a he's a very good tactical player, uh, practically a genius. And this is just a great great uh, trap here. And uh, you know I think I would have fallen into it. You know it, white plays knight b3. That's actually an error according to computer engines. After a very long time, initially they want to play knight b3. But if you give them enough time, eventually they come around to the point of view that white has to play rook b1 there. And that's kind of a good move. The idea is, you know, the idea of rook b5 and maybe force the exchange. If, you know, black exchanges there, it undoubles white's a pawns. So that would have been a good idea for white. White played knight b3 here, and that looks like just a winning fork of the king and a rook. Rook takes c1. And again, another x clan move because it's surprising. It leaves the queen hanging. And of course, here... Now, white played queen takes c1. The best move was rook takes c1. And the engines clearly show that was forced. But let's just analyze for a minute a lot of the players on the chess games website. You know, we're looking at the knight takes a5 there. So I just wanted to join them and, and uh, let's analyze that move because it is a very interesting possibility. After knight takes a5, what happens? So white would play, I mean, rather black would play rc takes d1 check. And white's forced to play king h2 there. That's absolutely forced. Uh, according to the computer, after bishop takes d1, then simply rook d1 check, king h2, e3. It's all, you can almost give that a double x clam. Nice little move there. Of course, if white takes with the queen, knight g4 check, and, uh, you know, wins the queen. So, and also, too, now here, according to the computer, black, white has to play queen f3. That's best. Two very inferior alternatives. F takes e3 is just horrible because black plays h5. And now black's threatening knight g4 check, king h3, rook h1 mate. And, you know, the, the white king has no squares. The only way that white would be able to avoid the checkmate, maybe, would be to give up his queen for a knight. But then he would just be a rook down. So that would be a horribly lost game. The other bad alternative, obviously, is queen takes e3. And that, of course, fails to the obvious knight fork, knight g4 check. Forking the, the king and the queen and regain, black regains the material with a huge surplus and has an easily won game. But anyway, after e3, according to the computers, the best move for white is queen f3, and now rook f1, pinning that pawn. Again, notice this pawn's still off limits. You still have the knight fork on g3. Now, if black isn't careful here, if he was to play a move like bishop b4, white would go queen a8 check, and it's black that's getting mated on the first row. But anyway, knight c6, bishop to d6, knight e5, and now just e takes f2. And, you know, black's got a very simple idea here. He's just going to play h5, bishop takes, and knight g4 check and rook h1 check and make a new queen and have a ridiculous amount of extra material. And uh, you put this on any, any engine, I guarantee you it's going to show you that it's an easy win for black. And I imagine you could win against just about anybody without a chess engine because that's just a totally lopsided win there for black. Anyway, going back to our other position here, after rc takes, RC takes d1 check on move 29 for black, king h2 was completely forced, That was or at least best. And then rook at 1 to d2. Of course, this is all engine analysis. Bishop d6, yet another trap. And of course, it's kind of an obvious one here. If queen takes rook on d2, bishop takes pawn on g3 check. And then, you know, this rook on d8 will take the queen. And of course, once more, if black regains the queen, he's winning easily. Queen e3, the computer showed that to be forced. Rook d7, f4, rook d5, queen b3, rook c5, knight b8, rook d8, knight a6, rc8, a5, g6. And uh, black is much better. Fritz shows minus slash plus. And this is not a hard position for black to play. He could play moves like uh, king g7 and bishop f8 and just double his rooks on the d file. And that's, you know, bang. I mean, you know, white's out of there. This knight's trapped on the edge of the board. And two rooks usually beat a queen, especially with that king. This bishop not being able to go to the f3 square means that this king is going to be very insecure. If these rooks double on the third rank you know the bishop goes back to f1 but the, then the rook's going to go here you know it's it's just all kinds of problems for um for black i mean rather for white and so you put that on any chess engine you'll see what i'm talking about but anyway that would would have happened had you know white grabbed the in this position here had white decided to grab the queen on a5 that's what we were analyzing there going back to the game the actual game you know after rook takes c1, white played queen takes c1. Again, probably it was better to have taken with the rook there. But rook takes check, queen takes the one. Queen takes a4. Here black's just clearly better. Uh, not only is he a, a pawn up, but in a minute the black, the white king, it's become obvious that the white king is in dire straits. Queen c2, g6, giving a little left on the back row. 
Queen C7, Queen B4. That's a very good move. Probably should give that move an exclamation. That's a very nice move. And, uh, you know, not only does he guard his bishop, he also threatens a very nasty check on E1. For example, if F3, Queen here check, Bishop F1, E3, and, you know, now he's got all kinds of threats, E2 and Queen E to pawn or Queen F2 check and winning the bishop, and white can't guard against all of that. So that's an easily won game for black. So that's because of the threat of queen e1 check, that explains white's next move, king f1, and now just e3. Now, in my mind, that was simply unnecessary. The chess engine seemed to indicate just, just with the idea of queen a3 and king f8 and queen takes pawn, black gets a, a easily won game. You know, it's it's not a difficult win at all. And it, not only does he, you know, win white's rook pawn and gets a, he'll be up two pawns, but he'll have a dangerous pass pawn. He can just run the rook, the pawn up the side of the board, and basically white has no counterplay at all. But anyway, white decides to play e3. From a practical standpoint, that's a very good move because now, you know, white virtually has to take here. And I think that's what I would have done if I'd have been white. Played pawn takes pawn. I know your pawn structure is wrecked, but at least, you know, you got rid of that dangerous pawn. And, you know, black has to work a little bit at least to pick off these pawns. White doesn't do that. He played queen takes a7. Obviously, you know, white must have known here. He's a very good player. He must have known here he was in trouble. And, uh, you know, but so taking the rook pawn is not a, bad move on a practical standpoint in other words if you're a player who's looking for counterplay maybe if you can get the queens off the rook pawn runs up the side of the board and causes black some real problems so maybe white did that just in terms of looking for some faint hope of counterplay or maybe even hoping for winning chances in the ending but anyway black takes on f2 now white has to take with the king there he plays queen takes f2 and i only gave that a, an inferior or a dubious because it didn't change the the evaluation of the computer in a large fashion, in a big fashion. If it had been a really big jump, I would have just given it a question mark. But since it was a fairly minor change in the evaluations, I only gave it a dubious. Of course, that was a bad move from a just a simple standpoint of, you know, the black knight moves and hits the queen with a gain of tempo. So knight e4, queen d4, that was a mistake there. The, correct, the only move for black was queen e3, but now, you know, white just plays bishop c5 here with a completely won game. And that's a really tricky little move. That's a nice little move. The point of that is if knight takes, then queen b1 check, and that's a back rank mate type of situation. He has to play a move like, you know, after queen b1 check, bishop to d1, queen takes bishop check, and then, you know, the queen's got to go back because otherwise it's mate. Queen takes, king takes, and then knight takes c5, and, you know, black's just a piece up and has a very simple in-game win. So that's a very nice little thing there. And if you Analyze that with any engine if you wish to check that. You'll see what I'm telling you is true. But anyway, here, after knight e4, white made a big mistake. He went queen d4. Very bad move. Knight check. And now the king, you know, if, if the king goes to g1, we get another knight for it check. And you can see the white king and the queen. King, uh, king and queen are forked again. So white had to go king f2. And now we've got the position for our problem of the day uh, in Tuesday, you know, of this week on the chess games website. And uh, now it's a very simple position. It's black to move and win. Black finds a very simple bishop c5. And it's just a simple tactic. Obviously, this pins the queen to the king, so king takes knight, bishop takes queen is an easy win for black. And there's also a little bit of a trick there. If knight takes, that just drops the queen, the queen takes bishop. And the uh, the final, of course, the final kicker is if queen takes c5, then just knight e4 check for king the king and queen, and that's an easy win. And that pretty much, uh, of course, the bishop the bishop pins the queen and wins the queen, and I showed you the tactics. And this was a nice game by Fresnay, but it was hardly flawless play by either participant. I think I did a fairly good job of uh, analyzing the alternatives there and also showed you some opening ideas there, maybe some transpositional ideas, and possibly even a chance to play a new opening system. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like my videos a lot and would like to support them, then please go to the PayPal website. That's www.paypal.com. And my email is lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. And you can make a donation to my account just by accessing by using my email. But that's not required. If you just enjoyed the, the video and would like to just drop me a line and say thanks and say you enjoyed the video, my email again is lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. And I just want to thank you for watching my video and hope you have a great day.